wants your stuff. Today, we're gonna dive into one of the most significant financial shifts of our time, the massive transfer of wealth from baby boomers to millennials. It is estimated that baby boomers hold about 50% of all US household wealth, making them the wealthiest generation in history. By 2030, millennials are expected to inherit over 68 trillion with a T, which will significantly increase their overall wealth. Baby boomers own a substantial portion of the real estate market. Many own their homes outright. As they age, a significant amount of that real estate is expected to be passed down to millennials. But here is the big question. Who actually wants the boomer stuff? All right, what steps do you need to take? to get ahead of it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. First, let's set the stage. Baby boomers, born between 1946 and 1964. They've accumulated significant wealth over their lifetime. Now, we're about to start seeing that historic transfer of wealth happen, mostly to millennials who were born between 1981 and 1996. Some of us Gen Xers might be in there as well. But here's the thing, while this transfer is about to take place, there is some concern over who is gonna want their things. Furniture, collectibles, vintage items, antiques, even real estate, it just might not fit the lifestyle and the preference of our younger generations. We know styles and trends change over time, and your grandma might love that couch that she's got in her family room, but it likely will not mesh with the current trends. We see this sometimes even with people relocating to Florida where what they, how they furnish their house up north is not gonna be how they furnish a house in Florida. All that beautiful, deep, dark furniture, cherry wood, all of those things, they don't necessarily go in a light and bright Florida home where we see a lot more white, we see a lot more coastal chic trend. What we've seen about millennials is that they prioritize experience over things. YOLO! You only live once. They would rather travel, experience, see things in the world versus be bogged down with too many things. It's a pretty big generalization, but it is one that tends to be holding true. So how do we start preparing for this transition? Well, we're gonna give you a few steps here where you can start. It has to start with evaluating your assets. You've gotta take a deep dive and look at what do you have. Not only possessions in your home, antiques, collectibles, furniture, things like that, but also what real estate holdings do you have? What stock holdings do you have? Are there other investments that you've got that are gonna be part of this plan and that might be transferring down to your heirs? Within your home itself, it'd be a good idea to take some time and walk your home and start making lists and categorizing furniture, sentimental items, antiques, china. Yeah, china. That's something that we all used to get as part of our wedding, but it just, in most cases, does not have a place in our current real world living. Most of us are a little more casual, don't even sit down to eat formal. We got china for our wedding, and I gotta be honest, we used it like, I don't know, maybe three times. And you know, we're coming up on 20, just celebrated 22 years of marriage. So we also eventually just, we went ahead and donated our China to an organization because it's just not something that we found useful with our current lifestyle. And we're not just talking about monetary value here. Sometimes you have things that hold a lot of sentimental value. So this is just about taking stock of what you got. You have categories, furniture, antiques, collectibles, real estate, whatever it might be. And then you might have, you know, you might highlight the things that have a high sentimental value. You might highlight the things that you think might have a high monetary value, but we just wanna get a clear picture of exactly where you stand with the items in your home and in your portfolio. Next, we have this listed as step two, but really this could have started, started us off with step one, but it is open communication. And this is gonna be so important throughout this whole process. Having candid discussions with your heirs about what is their preference? What do you want? What do they want? Trying to get ahead of this to prevent any future conflicts and ensure that your belongings are going to those who appreciate them. These conversations can be enlightening. You might find out that they have no 
interest in certain things where maybe you thought they would. And in fact, they're interested in something totally different and they might cherish something. When my grandma and grandpa passed away, they had this little turtle that was like a footstool. And it's the one item that all 10 of us grandkids actually asked about after they passed away. So you just never know what might hold value sentimentally or other or otherwise to one of your heirs. So it is all about aligning your expectations, making it a two-way conversation, wanting to understand plans on all sides and listen to concerns of all involved. Third step is professional advice. You might already have this in, in progress. In fact, we'll get to a stat later that talks about it. But if you have not, it is time to talk to a financial advisor, an estate planner, an estate attorney. They will really help you navigate the complexities of the wealth transfer and ensure that everything is managed effectively. Not only that, but these professionals are going to be able to provide insight to any kind of tax implications. What are the best ways to transfer your assets and strategies to help minimize any potential disputes down the way and to make it very clear. They will also help set up trusts, wills, any other legal mechanisms that are needed to help protect your estate. Professional advice assures that you are not missing out on any of those legal tax or financial strategies that will benefit your heirs. And one last note on that, it's important that you are communicating also with the executor of your trust wills, your financial plans, or whoever it is that's gonna know who helped set all this stuff up, how do they contact them, where do they find all the necessary information in the event that they need to access it. Fourth, you might need to consider donating items or selling items. If there are things that you know might not be appreciated by your heirs or when you have your conversations, they're not interested in them, then these are the next steps that you're going to want to take. It can simplify your estate and pro potentially provide tax benefits. You want to talk to your tax advisor about that. But when you donate items, you always want to make sure that you get receipts and share those with your tax advisor. So it is expected that the baby boomers will be donating a significant portion of their wealth to charitable causes. Some estimates are saying six to seven trillion dollars could be donated over the next couple of decades. If you are here in Southwest Florida, we have many di different options for this. We have everything from people who run estate sales to um, there are companies that will come and pick your items up if they're in good condition and they will donate them to uh, families in need here in Southwest Florida. There are also consignment shops where you can put your furniture for sale and get a portion of that back. So depending on what your exact situation is, you can let us know. We are happy to share some of these resources with you. Okay, the fifth step, the estate plan. We talked about it in step two. Maybe you have one already. Maybe you're just getting ready to start. But once you've got it, you've got to make sure that you review it and that you update it. According to a survey by caring.com, 60% of baby boomers have a will or estate planning documents already in place, which is awesome. Totally indicating a proactive approach to transferring their wealth to their next generation. But it is important to re regularly review and update Update your plan to reflect your current wishes and financial situation because we know things change all the time and making sure that it's updated will ensure a smooth transition when the time comes. Listen, life changes over time. So do your assets and so do your family dynamics. So this is why you wanna make sure you keep it up to date, scheduling those regular check-ins, especially when major life events are happening, marriages, births, significant financial changes, changes in your real estate portfolio, things like that. You also wanna continually make sure that your wills, your trusts, and that all of that is also reflecting your current situation and wishes and intentions. And then of course, keep communicating with your executor or the trustees of those items. This upcoming transfer of wealth is a monumental event. It does require thoughtful planning and open communication. By taking these steps ahead of time, you can ensure a smooth and joyful transition for both baby boomers and millennials. You can find us on social media. You can always contact us directly at 239-776-6872. We wanna know what questions do you have? What topics do you want us to cover about living joy in Southwest Florida? Oh, and my love for you is so strong.